Hey guys, it's Magaz here, connecting you to Airsoft. Today we're going to be taking a look at another ICS AEG. And before we do, I'd like to drop the following preamble. I am part of the ICS captain team and I have been since 2017. ICS sent this AEG out to me for the purpose of review and demonstration at events. I've been using ICS AEGs for well over a decade and any bias I have towards them comes from my past experience and love for the brand and not just because I have a relationship with them. Enough foreplay, let's get up to our nuts in this review video's guts. Everybody loves a good old fashioned AK pattern rifle. It's a classic design and a staple in most people's armories. A lot of people will say, yet rifle is fine and go for that traditional aesthetic route. However, I say, it's 2024 kids. It's time to unleash the space AKs. I mean, if random rebels are using them in Star Wars, it's probably time for some futuristic AKs worthy of blasting stormtroopers in Star Destroyer corridors or fighting space bugs on Klendathu. ICS heard the call and came to the rescue with the latest member of their AK series of rifles, the ICS CXP ARC. It's a very modernized take on the AK with features that bring the design from post-World War II clunkiness to the modern simulated battlefields of 2024 with features you would expect from a modern platform. Let's take a close look at those updates and see how this Space Blaster performs. The ARC weighs 3,365 grams and measures 638 millimeters with the stock folded and 884 millimeters with it extended. It's a hefty piece of kit, and most of that heft is towards the front end, which means if you are holding a corner or a field of fire, you will definitely start to feel it in those arms. The receiver is metal and is as you would expect from an AK pattern rifle, featuring all of the dimples and rivets you know and love. The fire selector is marked AB and OA. On the flip side is the CXP Angel logo and CXP Arc and also the SSS3 logo. The rear sight block has a serial number, caliber markings, and some factory markings. On the bottom of the receiver in front of the magazine well is the text, Airsoft Electric Gun, manufactured by ICS. Made in Taiwan. The pistol grip has ICS Ergo technology on the upper left hand side. The ICS chest piece logo features on the rubber butt pad. The only other markings are the M-Lock logo on the handguards and the position numbers on the sliding stock. One marked improvement over a standard AK pattern rifle is the updated fire selector. Situated in the same location as a traditional fire selector, the one included on the arc is built to last and has a nub on the lower edge to allow a right-handed firer to operate the selector with their index finger or thumb. While not as ergonomic as an AR, this is a vast improvement over the standard selector. It also features a notch cut into the top edge to hold the ball open. Some players noted that the fire selector may drop from automatic into semi during use. ICS have since remedied this issue with an updated fire selector. They sent one out to me, but I have yet to install it, purely because the current fire selector has not exhibited this issue. If and when it does, I will replace it with a newer version and make an update video. The bolt isn't just a thin cover over the ejection port like some other AK AEGs. It is a solid chunk of metal with a very large hefty recoil spring. It has all the aesthetics of the real AK recoil spring. This bolt can be pulled all the way back to the rear like a real AK rifle, unlike most AK AEGs in which the bolt only opens a few inches. When it is held to the rear, you can access the metal hop chamber. Aside from being metal, this is exactly the hop you would expect in any AK platform. This makes it compatible with any off-the-shelf AK chamber. Fixed inside the hop chamber is a 375 mm barrel. Hiding all these points is the aluminium top cover. This top cover is again updated from the standard AK pattern rifle. The shape is unique to the arc and it features a built-in Picatinny rail and rear sight. The sight serves as the hinge to hold the top cover into the rear sight block. Pushing the release tab at the rear allows the cover to lift upwards and it remains attached to the arc. One piece of the arc that isn't updated it's the magazine release. It's your standard AK affair. I've seen some modern AKs with the same kind of magazine release I have on my MP5, which allows the user to release the magazine with their index finger. This would have been a nice addition, but aftermarket parts are available to remedy this, so it's not a real loss. 
The gearbox features 8mm Bush's reinforced full metal teeth piston performance grade AL6061 cylinder and piston head, a metal nozzle and a QD spring guide, which is accessible by removing the stock plate at the rear of the receiver. It's wired to T-plug or Dean's instead of Mini Tamiya and, depending on the version you pick up, either features an inline MOSFET or the updated SSS V3 e-trigger. Take a shot every time I say trigger which has all the usual self-diagnostic modes that you would expect with the ICS S3 trigger. The trigger is short stroked and makes for a very snappy trigger response. The E-Trigger also has a two-stage fully automatic mode where a single pull of the trigger will give you three REM bursts and a long hold will give you continuous fully automatic fire. In an interesting aesthetic choice, the front sight is built into the gas return tube. Fixed to the 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread is a modern looking steel flash hider. There is a dummy cleaning rod underneath the barrel, the lightweight polymer handguard features licensed M-lock and the lower has a built-in short Picatinny rail as well. You can see on my example here, I have attached a Picatinny rail piece to the top handguard to allow me to use the Brain Explorer PEQ meant for my scope and selfie cameras. The upper handguard is removable just like a real AK pattern rifle. The pistol grip is ergonomically designed and looks very modern. One thing I will point out is there are two Allen bolts just behind the grip on the underside of the receiver. These will dig into your thumb or the web of your hand, so I advise wearing gloves. The side folding sliding stock is very Magpul Masada-esque. It folds over to the right hand side of the receiver, which does expose the stock wiring. It can be extended six positions and features a raisable cheek rest. To access the battery, you can either fully remove the extendable part of the stock or an easier option with regards to the massive amount of wiring needed for the S3 trigger, you can pull just the butt plate off. Before I realized you could do this, I would completely remove the stock then have to fight the wiring limb back into the stock and squeeze my battery in there too. Removing the butt pad only gives you a much bigger space to fit the wiring. One further issue I have noticed with the butt stock, if you have it fully collapsed and you pick it up by the stock, it will extend dramatically right there and then which is not ideal if you're going to be running a sling on it somehow or you're just trying to pick it up maybe don't pick it up with a butt stock like that you're gonna have to grab it by the girthy part of the stock or just by the grip or whatever the included 540 round high cap magazine is made from plastic and features a transparent window so the user can see how many rounds remain it's a modern 762 design and has a PMAG aesthetic. Optionally, ICS make a low capacity magazine that can hold 30 or 50 rounds. I would have preferred this to be a traditional mid cap with 180 to 200 rounds instead. The reasoning for the low capacity was apparently for realism, but hey, this is a space blaster, kids. Let's have those proper mid cap numbers, right? I prefer to use mid cap magazines, but I couldn't see myself running such large sized low capacity magazines. So I took a look at other options. I went for the Kymer. Yes, I'm saying it like that. I'm not pronouncing it to rhyme with semen. 170 round waffle magazines. These initially fit with no wobble at all, but this meant they would not feed. They needed some modification to the front and rear lugs. Just rubbing them on some sandpaper until they fed consistently was pretty much all it took. I've yet to test it with other brands of mid caps, so I've no further information on that as of yet. Now we've looked at all the features, let's set the arc to the chrono. We're using 0.2 gram BBs for this test, coming in at around the one dual mark, averaging around 319 FPS. Next, we'll take it to the range for the accuracy test. This is shot in a controlled environment with the arc clamped in place to remove as much human error as possible. We are firing around 20 meters at an A4 target, aiming for the alpha quadrant of that target. For this test, we're using 0.28 gram blaster BBs.
The following tests, the arc has been removed from the clamp and is being fired unsupported off hand. As you can see, the arc hits what it's pointed at quite effectively. Enough talk about how it performs in a controlled environment. This wouldn't be a fair review if we didn't take it out into the field and give it a real test. This footage from Swap Park Gate was the very first time I had fired the arc. We jump into the gameplay right here as we are pushing from our side of the site towards a building we call the Embassy. I did not set the hop. I left everything as it was in the box to see how it performed if you just bought it threw a mag and a battery in and ran out into the skirmish field. Second capture point parallel to the embassy, which could score us an extra point if we grab it. Both myself and Coop failed to capture that hard point. With red team now holding both ends of the field, blue team are sandwiched in between us. They decide to aggressively flank the sat base in a last ditch attempt to capture it. Unfortunately for the sat base contingent, we are overwhelmed and blue team get possession. At this point, the sat base is all that blue team holds. If we take it from them, there is no way we can lose. The only issue I had during the whole day was a piece of twig made its way into the high cap. This caused a stoppage. The magazine would not feed right when I had the drop on some Microsofters. That's little kids with higher guns. Maybe it was chance and maybe it was fate telling me not to commit simulated murder of children. I initially said that this is something that could happen to any gun and not a fault of the arc itself. I even made the quip, remember kids, try to keep your BBs free from random crap. But during the trip to the studio where I put about 2,000 rounds through the arc, I had two further stoppages due to the magazine failing to feed, like this example on screen now. Upon inspection, I could not see any dirt, so I tapped the magazine against the wall and it continued to feed. From that gameplay footage, you can see it performs really well in a woodland environment. 
I tried to run it for a game at level 2 in Atherton, but the tight corners at that site make it awkward to use a full length rifle with a tracer on the end and leg it about, so I switched out for the high capper challenger instead. What I did notice though, using the mid caps that have been filed down, the arc was chronoing at less than 200 feet per second. I have yet to look further into this issue. My thoughts on the arc. First of all, would I recommend it? As with most platforms I look at, it's a yes and a no. The weight of the arc could be a little much for some people, so if you want something light or short for CQB, maybe look at some other options. If you want something a little different than a standard AK, but still in the AK family, the arc could be a good choice for you. It is very robust, aesthetically not an ugly duckling, and out of the box, performance is above average. This could be a solid gun for a beginner who is dedicated and wants to stay in the game for a long time, or an experienced player wanted to try something a little bit different. The ARC is definitely on my main gun rotation. I have fielded it a few times now and really enjoy using it. It draws a lot of attention and so far, in my experience, it gets the job done. If you have any questions about the ARC, leave them down below and I'll have a go at answering them. If this has been useful to you, you can support the channel by heading over to patreon.com slash cbmpc and joining up like these awesome guys have over the years. Subscribe for more content like this and take a look at the video on screen right now if you want to see the full gameplay video from Swap Park Gate. Thanks for watching. I'm Magaz, and remember, kids, the air may be soft, but our balls are hard. <laughs>